Hey, what's up? My name's Cameron Doherty, and today we've got a pretty exciting first look at this, the Low Free Flow Light. This is a cheaper version of the Low Free Flow low profile mechanical keyboard that kind of took the world by storm a little bit over the last year and has gotten a lot of positive press, a lot of good reviews, and people really have been happy with it. The Low Free Flow Lite brings it in at a more entry level price. It's just getting announced on Kickstarter and it's gonna be out later this year. I don't know the exact details at this point. Low Free did send this over to me in order to take a look and give it a review. Today, I just wanted to do an unboxing and a first impressions to let you guys know whether I think this is something you should jump on on the early days of the Kickstarter. However, there was one glaring and obvious issue with me making this video, and that's that despite lots of people telling me in the comments that I should, I've still never actually touched the Low Free Flow original. So I went out and spent my own money to get one of those. So I'm gonna unbox both of these and do a first impressions for you live of both keyboards so that you can see me experience the low free flow for the first time, hear what I think about that, and then compare it live to the brand new low free flow light and see how they compare. All right, so without further ado, we're gonna jump in and do the original flow first, just so that I can set a baseline that many of you guys probably already have. Uh, if you've used one, if you own one, if you watched other people reviewing them, uh, I just sort of gotta get onto that same level. So let's get this opened up. Nice box there, a little foam on top, some details in a manual, keyboard, accessories are a USB-A to USB-C cable, uh, kind of rubberized, not braided, nothing too exciting, low free branded on it but we've got that and nothing else. So very simple. I do really like this box. It's got a little bit of a magnetic clasp, solid. That is very nice. I do keep all of my keyboard boxes because I have so many keyboards, I have to keep them all stored. So that is a nice one that I will enjoy keeping around. All right, let's take a look at this keyboard. So this is the white version, uh, which comes with, I believe it's called Ghost Linear Switches. Uh, so this one is quite a bit more expensive. Uh, I'm forgetting the exact price. I will put it up on the screen here uh, of what this goes for from an MSRP perspective. It is a full aluminum case and it is actually surprisingly light for being full aluminum, but it feels very sturdy. Uh, the edges are, I mean, it's metal edges, but they're very much not rounded and they're almost, they're not sharp, but they're, they're definitely not delicate. <laughs> like if you caught yourself in the wrong way on that, you, uh, you might regret it <laughs> if that fell on you uh, in any way. But otherwise, I mean, people love aluminum cases. I think they're very solid. There is, I think one of the biggest complaints of this keyboard is no adjustable feet. So there is just this, this static foot on here. It does have rubber pads. Looks like we've got a switch for on, off, and Bluetooth. Then another big complaint with this one was no uh, USB receiver, no 2.4 gig connection. So you can either do Bluetooth or this USB-C port can connect uh, in a wired mode. And yeah, that's, a, that's the biggest things physically here to talk about. It is white backlighting, and then it has some RGB side lights, I believe. So we'll see, we'll see if those turn on when we enable it. All right, let's give this thing a try.
Okay, that was uh, terrible words per minute from a first test. 69 words per minute, nice. Uh, first impressions, wow, it is very smooth. These key presses are incredibly smooth. They sound nice and delicate, uh, but it's interesting. One of the things that I took note of one of the things I took note of with the light version, I'm interested to see how it compares, is that they lowered the uh, actuation force so that you don't need to push it quite as hard. And that's one thing that just stood out for me, that this is a little bit firmer than I was expecting. I think it was like 50, I think is what they were sitting at here and they decreased it to 40, something like that. Um, so a little bit, I think that's where some of my mistakes came in. It's just a little bit different I've been most recently typing on the uh, Keychron K3 Max, working on that for a review, and that must be a little bit less actuation force because uh, it feels substantially different than what I've been used to most recently. Uh, otherwise, yeah, it sounds lovely. I'm digging the sound. Let's try the space bar here. Not the best space bar, but a very good space bar and very consistent. That's a little bit surprising how consistent it is. It's not the best sound I've ever heard, but I don't know that I've ever had one that side to side is quite as consistent as that. So there must be some, uh, some sort of silicon or something underneath there that's working really well to keep it as a consistent sound. Very different than the key presses, but that's quite all right. Uh, otherwise, just looking at the keyboard, I haven't I haven't done a whole lot of research on the layout here, so this is very much just a first impressions. Uh, it looks like pretty basic functions across the top. I see media controls, I see a lock button, which is cool, brightness controls here, I'm assuming for the backlighting. Uh, I didn't see, oh no, the RGB is on. I'm just with bright lights. I don't know if you'll be able to see that at all, maybe from the overhead cam, uh, but there's some red lights going on there. It's just in the in the studio lighting here, not gonna show up. So maybe I can throw in a B-roll shot of that. Uh, but otherwise, I think very, very solid keyboard. I still, I don't know. I'd have to, I'd have to really evaluate it more in a full review to know if I felt like it met the, the price point that they've got it at. But very nice, very solid, the type on. Now for the comparison point and what you guys have actually been waiting for, now that I've got my brain set to the original, let's uh, take a look at the new version. The first thing that is very noticeable is the quality of the materials. They've definitely taken a step down in order to save money. I think that's gonna be a theme here, which is totally fine, but trying to take this more premium offering and make it more accessible to more people They've taken this nice magnetic packaging with a really high grade cardboard down to a much more basic cardboard and just a flap rather than that magnetic clasp. So it's a bit of a, of a downgrade there, but a totally acceptable one that would make it more accessibly priced to the everyday consumer rather than just people interested in truly high-end, high-end keyboards. Well, let's open this up. All right, very similar little piece of foam. Very similar manual here. We've got the accessories, same cable it looks like, but now we're in gray rather than black. And so I don't know if they color matched it by the device, because it looks like they sent me the gray version. So it might be gray with gray, black with black, white with white. Not really sure off of just one here, but otherwise this is Basically, this looks like the exact same cable, uh, still low free branded A to C with a, a side angle C. And no other accessories. There should be a USB receiver somewhere. Maybe it is, looks like it's on the back, okay. That's it, nothing else. So these are very, very simple packages. There is not a lot of bells and whistles with them. They're not sending you key pullers, even though these are both hot swappable. Uh, but these are, you know, basically just giving you the keyboard. I think with the premium that works out well because if you're spending this much on a keyboard, you're probably in the hobby. You probably have a key puller if you wanted to change things. But if you are going for this lower end one, you might be on that borderline where this could be your first really nice keyboard 
And so you might not have those accessories uh, and having some included in the box might be nice, but again, trying to save money, so I get it. So let's take this out. There we have it. This is the gray color, which they call, uh, where did I put the colors? They call marble. So this is the marble color. And so we can take a look at the differences here. And so similar dimensions, a little bit fatter on top. And now we've got a big low free brand there that we didn't have previously. I think previously we had low free branded on the side here. Uh, but they brought that up to the top, which some people may uh, like, other people may have a problem with uh, being, a, being having that so in your face like that. But the, the larger sort of forehead on the top of the keyboard here is to allow for this roller that lets you control your volume. So you got a nice volume knob there that you can use. Uh, otherwise, we have switched fully to an ABS plastic over the aluminum body. And so it makes it just a little bit lighter, not not as much of a weight difference as I would have expected. I'll put exact weights up on the screen so that you can see, but I expected it to be a little bit more, uh, but I guess with a little bit of extra plastic, a little bit of extra components, they wound up pretty close. Otherwise, the layout looks very similar. The fonts are very different. They're, they've gone very small and all the way up at the top of the keys, which I'm not sure how I feel about that. I much prefer the look of the old one where they've got sort of center justified uh, printing across the board. But these ones go very much on the top middle of every key. Otherwise, looking around the rest of it, we added in some adjustable feet here. So let's see what we think of that. So that's a decent angle. I would probably use it with feet up versus with feet down. With feet down, it looks to be very similar, uh, a, just a tiny hair lower than the original uh, when feet are down, but with feet up, you're obviously getting a lot more typing angle. These are really interesting feet that I've never seen before because they have just a big old hunk of rubber at the bottom that I think would really help with vibration and preventing it from moving around. So it is pretty much as much, oh, it's the same. Okay, this is very clever actually. The, the same rubber that is used as the foot when it is flat, that same rubber piece comes out and is used as the foot when you're actually using the foot. Uh, I don't know if that sentence made any sense, but that's a really clever way to do it, that you're utilizing the same single big piece of rubber there, whether the foot is down or whether the foot is up. And that is a really interesting thing that I feel like they created themselves. I have never seen that on another keyboard. You guys can let me know whether you've seen it before. Uh, otherwise, we do have now the introduction of a 2.4 gig USB receiver, uh, which is an adorable little guy here with a little, little hole in it, which is interesting. Uh, I guess you could put it onto like a keychain or something if you really wanted to. I'm not sure if there's too much demand for that, but uh, it does have a nice storage compartment there for when you're not using it and it is pretty much out of sight when not in use. We maintain a switch on the back for it looks like off wired or wireless, which I'm assuming is both Bluetooth as well as the USB receiver. And then we have our USB-C port there for wired operation and for charging. Uh, both of these maintain the same battery. It's a 2000 milliamp hour battery, which obviously I haven't used these and I haven't really watched the reviews enough to know whether that's been a problem. But comparing that to some of the like Newfie keyboards that have gone up to 4000 milliamp hours feels a little bit behind, especially at some of these price points. Uh, but let's jump into what I'm sure many of you are, are eagerly awaiting, which is what does this sound like now? Switching to the plastic body and uh, and seeing what it sounds like. So let's give it a try.
I'd say they achieved a very, very similar feel and a pretty similar sound despite the sort of cheaper version here. So this has uh, the Spectre switches in it. So they describe it as light and delicate. Uh, Lofri did also send over the Hades switches, which I'll have to give a try soon, but those ones are smooth and silent, so designed to be more of a silent switch. And these are, I guess, a little bit louder. They're definitely a little bit louder than the ghost switches in the original here. And despite having more, or I'm sorry, less actuation force, it still feels, it, at least in my first type, felt still like it took a little bit more effort than I was expecting, which again, might just be what I'm coming from and it might just be that it needs a little bit of adjustment. We're kind of reacting live here. But otherwise, I think sounds are super consistent around. Again, the space bar, I think is actually improved. It's quieter, still extremely consistent across the board, which is really solid and really cool to see on a, on a cheaper keyboard. This does, I didn't get, pricing initially when I took this, but I believe we're looking at around $130. Also, if you're watching this around release, then there's gonna be uh, kind of launch deals around the Kickstarter. So if you jump on this early, you can obviously get it for much cheaper. Uh, September 19th, I believe is the target date for the Kickstarter to launch. And there's a super early bird deal that'll get you a great price and then also come with a Switch uh, switch puller, keycap puller, and a cleaning brush, which is pretty solid to get some freebies. Everybody loves free stuff. But let's let's keep looking at this. So one of the things I wanted to try was this volume knob. Interesting. It's got a little bit of a side-to-side -side movement here that kind of clicks a little bit. In terms of just basic use, it's relatively quiet. It's not the most satisfying action when you're when you're rotating it around, but in terms of just fine tuning your volume, it's pretty good. Let me actually connect it though, because one complaint that I have had in the past with volume knobs is the challenge of getting them to uh, fine tune your volume versus kind of jumping up and then jumping down. So let's see whether this has a similar issue. Okay, so we've got it connected now. Let's adjust our volume. Yeah, it's the same problem I've had in the past. So when you're dealing with Max, Max have those really, like they don't have many volume increments. When you're dealing with a PC, you've got a hundred, zero to a hundred volume. In the, in the Mac world, it just goes up by bars and there's only probably, I don't know, a dozen or 15 of them or something like that. And when you do one turn of the roller, you often get two steps up or down, which in a Mac can be a really big difference in terms of the volume. And so it can be really frustrating if you can't get it to the point you're actually looking for, if you keep going above it, below it, above it, below it. Uh, so note to low free to see if that's something that maybe you could fine tune in the future to get that to be just, just a little less sensitive, really. I Personally, I would much rather have to go like this to turn it up if needed, uh, then lose the ability to really fine tune it with single turns. Uh, it's interesting actually, as I turn it quickly, it's moving less. So that is notable. Um, so if you can't get it to fine tune, move it around quickly and then stop <laughs> and you might be able to get it to where you're looking for. Anyway, enough about the volume knob. Uh, oh, interesting. Okay, so the new keycaps are shine through uh, which I did not realize. Probably very tough to see. I don't know if I can shield it to maybe get it from the overhead, but adding shine through to these keycaps. And so that is, a, I'm sure, a welcome change for many people. It's interesting to think of having it all the way on the top and also shine through might be a really good, might be really usable actually when you're thinking about where your fingers would go of still sort of being able to see the letters and still see the shine through even when you're kind of on it. Maybe that's what they were going for. Not really sure. I'd have to really give it a give it some time to to see how that pans out. Uh, a few moments later. All right. So one of the problems with me recording unboxings like this is I talk way too much, 
And so I've gotten cut off now once by a really loud car driving by, which interrupted things. Then I got interrupted by the recording stopping on the camera because it re reached a recording limit. So I'm just gonna try and wrap this up and give you my overall thoughts here in a solid, concise manner. I think that overall this move by Lil Free is a smart one because this was a very expensive keyboard. It got a lot of positive press. I think there were people that had issues with certain features like lack of adjustability, lack of having a USB receiver, a few other items there. But overall, the typing experience was really solid, very smooth, very quiet, and a lot of people love that. Now introducing the cheaper version gives them this opportunity to try out some of these new features that they wanna put onto the next iteration of this without committing to the next iteration. So they can try a couple things. So they can try out these adjustable feet, which I think is a home run based on how they implemented those, really solid. Uh, I think they've tried out this volume knob. I don't know how many people were asking for a volume knob, but they can see the reaction to that. I think very solid. I think if they made one slightly more premium on this version, it might work out. They can try out things like changing up the keycaps a little bit, putting that top, uh, top justified, view with the shine through and sort of go down that route, see what people think. I'm a little bit mixed on those. I really think I need to sit with it for a little while to determine how I feel long-term. They can mix up the branding. They can mix up a lot of different things. And so this now gives a lot more people the ability to get to this low free keyboard and get this typing experience that is a little bit harder to find. They're now competing with more brands. They're coming right in around the same pricing as Nufi, as an example. So I think there's gonna be a lot of comparisons coming out between this low free flow light and those Nufi Air keyboards because they're gonna be right at that same point competing. It'll be interesting to see who kinda of wins out there in the, the public eye. And yeah, I think it's gonna keep them innovating and trying new things. This has been cool to be a part of. So thank you, Lofri, for reaching out and for sending this to me. Uh, I, as I mentioned, bought this one with my own money. I'm gonna do a full review of the Low Free Flow, a full review of the Flow Lite, and then I'll also probably look to do some comparisons to things like the new fee and potentially a few other keyboards. Comment down below what you'd like to see me compare it to, what sort of sound comparisons you wanna hear, uh, what type of specific detailed comparisons you're, you'd be interested in, what are you considering buying this, or uh, what, do you compete, what are you comparing it against in order to make your purchasing decision? And with that, uh, I hope you found this useful. I hope that you take a look at the Low Free Keyboard. I will link down in the description to the, the page that will have the Kickstarter on it once it is launched. And yeah, I appreciate you guys watching. Thank you so much as always. We are going for 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So if you're not already subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and uh, you'll get some more great keyboard content plus a whole slew of other tech videos for you to enjoy. So thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one.